and pollution could not be timelier and more relevant across the world, we are witnessing rising temperatures, more droughts, floods, melting ice caps, and the disruption of a human life in every continent. We cannot go on like this forever. Whether it's the food insecurity facing hundreds of millions of people, rising pollution-related chronic illness, destroyed homes and livelihoods in the most climate-vulnerable communities in developing states, or the rapid pace for global urbanization. The only realistic way to address them all is through effective, inclusive, and sustainable multilateral action to tackle climate change, biodiversity loss, and pollution. In Somalia, we are on the front line of the climate change, and our government is working tirelessly to address the enormous challenges we face in mitigating, adapting to the new painful reality we're facing today. As a country, we are witnessing rising temperature and have just come out of a four-year drought with a climate-induced humanitarian situation still stubbornly persisting. Looking forward, it's predicted that extreme weather events like droughts and floods will increase having disproportionate impact on our people's lives, livelihoods, infrastructure, land degradation, biodiversity loss, and food insecurity. Accordingly, for us in Somalia, I would strongly argue that we have passed the point of climate crisis and we are now in the climate emergency stage. Given this agonizing reality, we need the support of all our international partners to take immediate action to address this effectively and quickly. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, I'm glad to inform you that having established Somalia's first Minister of Environment and Climate Change in the year 2022, our government is in the process of finalizing the remaining few policy, frame, policy and legal frameworks to safeguard our environment. Key among these is the new environmental protection and management law which our government ratified only last week. This legislation is fundamental in informing our environmental responses to the existential challenges we face at this critical time in a determined and systematic manner, including biodiversity loss and pollution address. Furthermore, we are planning the importation, trade, and use of plastic bags from the end of June this year. This is certainly a game-changing action which will protect our people and environment from plastic pollution. Effective, inclusive, and sustainable multilateral actions to tackle climate change, biodiversity loss, and pollution must include sincere action on climate financing without available, accessible, and affordable financing. Most of the developing states like Somalia cannot meet their vast and most pressing adaptation mitigation requirements and priorities. Our national determined contribution reflects our commitment to addressing climate change through a comprehensive framework that prioritizes both mitigation and adaptation strategies. The total cost of implementing these strategies is estimated to be more than $15 billion through 2030, which underscores the scale of investment required to meet the targets set by Somalia. To meet our adaptation and mitigation targets, this is more than we raise in domestic revenue or are able to borrow from vertical and multilateral funds or the private financing markets. Given the difficulty for access to climate financing, 
the international, the international climate financing architecture is not serving our needs at the moment and is not fit for the purpose at the moment as well. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, there is a huge mismatch between available climate financing and the emergency situation most of the world's affected states, especially fragile countries like Somalia, are in. Accordingly, there must be equity in global access and resource mobilization to ensure that all nations are able to respond to their climate crisis equally for the benefit of humanity. Additionally, there must be a burden sharing between the developed and the developing world in this matter. In the spirit of multilateralism and common development to achieve sustainable development even beyond the 2030 UN aspiration. Better managed and protecting Somalia's environment as our government is committed to will ensure that our vast natural resources, including our oceans, fertile lands, and livestock can translate to green energy, jobs, and growth for the benefit of our people and the wider Horn of Africa region. We are currently working on a bankable and investment-ready projects to attract climate financing and investors and are hopeful that this will help our government raise more domestic resources to effectively finance our national mitigation and adaptation needs on a permanent basis in, in line with our national climate financing strategy. Before I conclude, I would like to stress here that Somalia facing multiple challenges, the war against terror, the poverty line, be, the, below the poverty line, most of our population are refining, post-conflict environment, the fragility situation, this has compounded the effects of environmental challenges. Somalia faced four consecutive drought, four consecutive years of drought, and the fifth year was the El Nino and the floods that destroyed whatever remaining after the droughts. In conclusion, I'm confident that we, as a community of nations, are aware to existential threat that climate change, biodiversity loss, and pollution poses to our very existence. This destructive evidence is all around us. However, we are still lagging behind and when it comes to taking effective, inclusive, and sustainable multilateral actions to tackle them, where it be accessing climate financing, knowledge sharing, cooperation on a specific international climate protection measures, like banning plastic bags and systematically punishing those that dump chemical waste in our oceans. We need to be more united and community nations and international institutions more than ever before. Our collective survival depends on this. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, I thank you.